eight-time Grammy nominee from Alice in Chains, Jerry Cantrell. Hello. How's it going? All right, a couple of rowdies out there, cool. Uh, maybe you know this one. You know, it's not much fun playing to a uh, recorded track, even if it is one of ours, so uh, why don't we, uh, we think about getting a band up here with me? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Rocksmith. Okay, uh, edit session mode. Change band. Okay. Uh, rock. Change instrument four. Okay, and page down. And synth. Okay, cool. Much, Jerry. That was killer. Thanks. All right, so tell us, hey everybody, tell us what just happened there. Uh, well, uh, this is the new session mode for uh, Rocksmith 2014, and uh, I picked a virtual band and started playing, and uh, the game's band reacts to what I do, and uh, it's like jamming with real musicians. That's very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you think of session mode in general? Well, the technology is amazing, and uh, there's nothing really like it today. I have to tell you that it's really fun and addictive, and uh, you know you can play for hours trying uh, different bands and different instruments. Yeah. Hopefully, you can play for different hours, but we're not going to be able to sound like Jerry Cantrell. <laughs> <laughs> the new session mode is going to be a big part of Rocksmith 2014, which comes out this October, right. as well as many other new features and surprises, and of course, brand new music. And obviously, what I and everybody else want to know is if Alan's Allison Chains is going to be on the game. Yeah, um, I, think, uh, I think the new single, Stone, is going to be on Excellent, yeah. excellent. Again, yeah. we would all aspire to play like you on that song. We are yeah. so proud to be part of a product that makes guitar playing more accessible 
to a wider audience. That's you. That's you guys are excited yeah. about that as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, anything that gets guitar in uh, yeah. guitars and hands is uh, is a good thing for kids. You know, so or anybody. Yeah. 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 Well, it's uh, it's awesome for all aspiring guitar players, whether you're a beginner or not. Rocksmith 2014 is the fastest way to learn guitar. So everybody give it up for the incredible Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. Thank you very much. So great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having oh, me. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I did so many dirty deeds to Alice in Chains when I was a kid and also the other day. All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Ubisoft E3 2013 Media Briefing. I am your host, Aisha Tyler. Welcome. Welcome to the show. I am so incredibly excited to be back to introduce a straight bonkers slate of games. I'm so freaking amped. E3 is my favorite time of the year. It's like Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, my birthday, a boss fight, and a UFC heavyweight championship rolled all into one. I literally could not sleep last night. And that, well, that's because I was playing EC3, but I still, I didn't sleep at all. And last year, we got a little taste of the future. I know you guys remember it, with the announcement of Watch Dogs. It was awesome, yes. I know how I, know how I feel about Watch Dogs. And in the hopes of building on that excitement, Ubisoft is diving belly first, ass out, into the next gen pool. And if what I saw in rehearsals is any indication, we should all be pretty freaking excited. So. I can't wait to kick this off. Now, if you're anything like me, when you get excited, you also have a million questions. And uh, I want you guys to feel free to tweet your questions or your reactions using the hashtags that you're going to see throughout the show, all right? And then after the show, I'm going to be hosting the official live post show with the Ubisoft dev teams. We're going to answer whatever you guys throw at us, all right? So fire away if the urge strikes you. And remember, there are no stupid questions. Yes, yes, there are. There are very stupid questions, absolutely, but don't worry, we'll answer those too. I promise you that. Uh, maybe not the way you wanted, but we will answer them. Kicking things off today is a game that you will be able to get your grubby mitts on in just a few short weeks. August 20th marks the return of the unique and iconic franchise, Splinter Cell. Yes, feel free to clap. You know you want to. I can't wait for what is probably the most detailed and rewarding secret operative experience of its generation. Splinter Cell Blacklist is, quite simply, the biggest Splinter Cell ever. It is packed with everything you could possibly want, an engrossing single-player campaign starring Sam Fisher, multiple co-op missions, and, as you probably know by now because you're spoiling buddies, the legendary Spies vs. Mercs multiplayer makes its triumphant return. But, as they say at UBC, yeah, you can clap for that too. Being stoked is allowed. This is not an economics conference. As they say at Ubisoft, ça suffit. This is Splinter Cell Blacklist. America. This is the Blacklist. The blacklist. We, we have won. one demand. You have soldiers in 153 countries. Now, for every week, we will attack you. We are the engineers. We've got some crazy ass encryption going on. Don't take me over, Done. The world is looking for answers, Mr. Fisher, and I don't have any. Fourth echelon needs to find them. You can't do that without a leader. When the fixed man comes with me, no questions asked. You can have Charlie Cole. And Grimm's daughter has recruited one of the CIA's best for mission support, Isaac Briggs. Grimm is out. Sorry, Sam, that's a non-starter. Nobody works better with you than she does. Welcome to fourth echelon, Mr. Fisher. Paladin One and the fourth echelon team are ready, Madam President. We're running analytics to find the target locations as we speak. I'll get you up to speed on the plane. Prototype military transport. Loaded with custom modifications. Every resource that you'd have on the ground. This puppy makes Air Force One look like a paper airplane, hey Sam? Word of a stunning attack on the massive U.S. military installation on the island of Guam. A group calling themselves the Engineers has claimed responsibility. They're calling the attacks the Blacklist. The Blacklist. The Blacklist. You can't stop the Blacklist. Grenade! 
We've got visual confirmation. Sam, talk to me. He's dead. Take them out before they trigger that bomb. Ready. Three, two, one. It looks like you're in a sweet spot to launch the tri-rotor. Do a sweep with your goggles. We hunt them down, force them to make mistakes. We can't wait. This is it, Briggs. I'll cover your exit. Go, 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 go! Briggs, I'm waiting on you. Teamwork, I love it. Copy that, Briggs. Nice shooting. Time to go hunt. Yes, and there goes my fall. Now, another icon, I got a different mic. The last one was going in and out. Hopefully this one works. If it doesn't, I'll just start screaming at you. Nothing more fun than a giant black lady screaming at you, especially in bed. Another iconic Ubisoft character with a new game on the way is Rayman. In 1995, he was just a cute two-dimensional little bugger designed for the Atari. Jaguar time machine, and now 18 years and 13 games later, Rayman has firmly staked its claim as one of Ubisoft's most beloved characters and acclaimed franchises. Off the heels of the highly rated Rayman Origins and the 2012 iPhone Game of the Year Rayman Jungle Run, welcome to the gorgeous world of Rayman Legends. Now, we know that you guys have been waiting for a long time for this game, but Ubisoft really wanted to make it the biggest and best Rayman to date, and you will be able to play it on September 3rd, very, very soon. To celebrate E3, Michel Ancel and his team have a nice, juicy taste of what the new Rayman is going to look like. Enjoy. The Glade of Dreams is in danger, my friend. Go! Quickly wake up our legendary heroes!
Rayman has always been that game where you're telling yourself while you're playing, all right, just one more, and then I'll take my kid to the emergency room. A little bit of ice, that'll help. Next up is a newcomer that is already adding to Ubisoft's stable of memorable characters. The mighty quest for epic loot is all about giving users the ability to create content and compete within a humorous, persistent, free-to-play world. At its core, it's a game that teaches how to thrive in a capitalist society. You build up your own stuff, and then you go take other people's stuff who aren't as capable of defending themselves, because you're a nice guy, and then you do that over and over again until you die. Here to tell you all about it is brand creative director, Louis-Pierre Farron. Thanks, Aisha. The mighty quest for epic loot welcomes you to the world of Opulencia. Your goal is simple. It is all about stealing from your neighbor and protecting your pile of loot. So first things first. Build up your castle and protect it from invaders. Fill it with deadly creatures and traps that will hopefully keep your treasure room safe. You'll have a ton of tricks up your sleeve to let you be creative in the way you want to take invaders out. Now, choose your hero. I personally love to play tonight, so gear him up and choose a victim. If it's a friend, that's even better. And players know that they need to protect their treasure, so it's never a walk in the park to reach the treasure room. You'll need to use different skills, tactics, and even in some cases, try out different heroes to reach that delicious treasure. If you manage to defeat his defenses, make sure you let him know you stopped by and leave him a friendly message. My personal motto is to loot and protect. And this is why I'm generously inviting you all to try to take a piece of my treasure. So head over my castle. The address is LPPA, you know me, at level 30. Did Today, we're proud to announce that we've reached our closed beta. So just go to themightyquest.com and join us now. To celebrate this, tonight, Sir Payne Hammer will take you behind the scenes of what really happened when we visited this castle in our announcement trailer. You put it in cold water, it shrinks. Oh, hi. Sir Payne Hammer here. When a crew of world-renowned filmmakers approached me to document a day in my life, my only question to them was, what took you so long? Join me on a little voyage that I like to call making a masterpiece. This is my castle. There are many like it, but this one is... I don't like to brag or anything, but I've looted hundreds of... Ah! This is Nigel. He's like a deadly weapon and the bestest friend you could ever have, all in one! Good Lord, O-M-G! Where is it all coming from? Go 26, be that prune set, please. I call this my gauntlet of doom. It's awesome for keeping out any would-be thieves. I'm okay. My spine took the brunt of the impact. Leaving so soon? Ah, go f yourself. Okay. Take care now. Have a good trip, you son of a Your mother Some banana trees in my day. Bigger saline drip. Friggin' alphabet soup and Dust Bowl Carnival. Was that a bit too much? Guys, that was too much, wasn't it? Humor and gaming are obviously two of my favorite things in the world, and if you combine them into a single experience, it's pretty much digital crack. Which brings us to one of the newest members of the Ubisoft family, South Park, the Stick of Truth. Yes. Yes. I think the first name they pitched didn't make it past the censors. With 16 seasons and a film behind them, Matt Stone and Trey Parker have shown there is literally no subject that they cannot make you laugh at. 
I'm going to teach you a fart called the Nagasaki. It's called the Nagasaki because if you do it right, it makes people go, Ooh. Nagasaki! <laughs> Just remember one very important thing. Never, ever fart on anyone's balls. You got that? All right. Coming this holiday season. Or some holiday season, hopefully kind of soon. You know how video games are. <laughs> and hashtag Nagasaki fart. Absolutely, and you're welcome, Internet. Now, it's time to get serious, all right? It's the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's next-gen time. You, yes, you can get excited about that too, or you can be pissy about it like the internet. Uh, Ubisoft continues to cement its place atop the gaming industry with its iconic and enduring franchises and groundbreaking creative development. And I am so freaking happy to welcome the man responsible for guiding the company to its current level of extraordinary success. So everybody, give a huge hand for Ubisoft co-founder and CEO, Yves Guillemot. Nice to see you. You too? How are you? So, so Eve, I'm incredibly happy to be back this year. So excited to be here with you. You're here to kick off the next gen segment of the show, and you've been really vocal. And I know, I'm a giantess. I'm literally like two people put into one. I know. I know it's, you're feeling LeBron James for me. It's okay. I understand. Now, you've been really vocal in the media about getting these new consoles going, haven't you? Why exactly is that? You know, because at Ubisoft, we love new consoles. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it drives next-gen gaming and big leaps forward. So what have you got for us today? You know, I want to show you a new game from uh, talented teams at Ivory Tower and Reflection. You know, I'm very, very proud of this game. I'm convinced it's going to revolutionize the genre. Oh. So it's called The Crew. So take a look. Excellent.
was so incredible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to the creative director of the crew, Julian Garrity. Hey, Aisha. How's it going? How are you? Welcome. That's great. You look rad. Thank you very much. Yeah. You look pretty rad yourself. Thank you. All right. It's not a puppy, but it's with the compliments of the team. Oh, wow. There's very a little, nice. There's a little special something on there for you. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, normally I don't take bribes, but when it comes to gaming, I am incredibly unscrupulous. I have no morals whatsoever. So, later. Thank you very much. So, a new generation of hardware demands a new experience for driving games. With the crew, our first step was to ask, how do we use this new tech to change the status quo of driving games? The first answer we came up with, more variety in a video game world as big as has ever been created. Iconic city streets, off-road countryside, forests, mountains, desert flats, sand dunes, the whole of the USA. Now, with this ultimate play open world playground in place, for the first time ever, you'll experience all the adventures of driving as you seek to infiltrate and take over a criminal organization one city at a time. Doing so, you'll experience what total freedom is. It's up to you to choose your cars, your customizations, your style of playing. This is driving at its most exciting, varied, open, and I like to think fun. How can we make this next-gen driving experience even more thrilling? We believe that sharing and competing with friends is essential. So we've made the entire game an online persistent world, blurring the line between the single player, the co-op, and competitive modes. You can play solo, of course, but even better. Group up with your friends, create a crew, and play co-op in every single mission, event, or race. Those traffic cars you were driving past at 180 miles per hour in downtown Detroit, they could be AI, but they could also be potential rivals or crew members, creating a truly immersive world that is very much alive. Now we're going to jump into a live demo of the game, where we'll see everything that I've just mentioned. We'll follow four players in four different regions of the USA. Then they'll all unite in Miami, forming a crew, customizing their vehicles to perform a takedown mission together. Our first stop is in New York City, where Steve is kicking off an illegal street race across the Brooklyn Bridge and outrunning the police. of New York, we join our second player, Fergus, exploring Black Hills close to Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. Now, he's exploring with a friend, tracking down some skills, and there are thousands of these 20-second trials scattered throughout the world. Each one will reward you with experience, cash, and parts. And you see those hills over there? You can drive all the way over there and explore them, too. Now, our third player is Sly, and he's driving through the back roads in Nevada. He's going to launch a skill that requires him to beat a ghost one of the ways we feature asynchronous challenges. But get this, he's driving a high-speed performance car that needs to stay on the road to really perform versus the ghost of his friend, a dirt car that is built for going across rocky terrain. Just over the hill, you can see Las Vegas. We could drive all the way down there and drag race the strip, but what we're going to do is to join Paul in the streets of Miami, our final stop. 
Now Paul is wearing a hat, so he's not very good, and needs some help to finish a cooperative mission. So, he's sending invites to all of his friends, the three other players that we just saw, to beat a mission in a cooperative way. Note that there was no lobby, no separation of the online multiplayer and the single player experience. And this demo is live, so we're bound to make a few mistakes. Now our customization system is something that we're pretty proud of. It allows players to tailor their car to exactly the type of performance that every race, challenge, or mission requires. And yes, you can strip all the parts away from your, the body of the car, choose individual performance parts from the engine to the rims, and build the vehicle back up. Now that the crew is ready, they're going to launch the, compare, the, compare, the cooperative mission. This was much easier when the room was empty. Sorry about that. Now, it's a takedown of a rival faction driver that will take off four players across busy city roads, through backyards, across grassy parkland, and over beach dunes. The city of Miami is truly their driving playground. And as the players celebrate the completion of another mission, we see the arrival of a new threat in the form of a rival crew. The core of the game is collaborating and competing, and now it's up to the crew of four friends to work together to see off this new challenge.
them. And there's something else. The tablet that I gave Aisha earlier on wasn't a bribe, wasn't just no. a bribe. She used it to prepare her own car while we were playing the game on stage. Yeah, you guys just took me through it backstage, and it's rad, it's very cool. You can customize the ride on your iPad, and the one that I just customized on my iPad is now available in the game, which is killer. And that's something that everyone here can try on the booth tomorrow. I will show but you. But it's not all we have for our second screen experience. Very, very cool. Insane. Everybody needs to check this out. It's so awesome. Thanks for the demo. Thank very you. Very cool. You want me to you take can, that? Yes, you can hold on to that for me. All right. Now, imagine that with one touch of your phone screen, you could bring up any personal information you would want on any person in this room. If you had all that personal information at your fingertips, is there any limit to the kind of power that you would have? The NSA thinks not. You're about to get that power. And here to talk about the game that has already come to define next gen, give it up for the senior producer of Watch Dogs, Dominique Gay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Now, we live in a world where everyone and everything is connected. I mean, our lives are basically stored on computers, and we rely on our smartphones to connect with work, with information, and even with the people we love. Now, in Watch Dogs, the question we ask is, what would you do if you could hack into all those devices, if you could basically pry into anyone's darkest secrets, and if you had complete control over the systems in the city of Chicago. And you will experience this through Aidan Pierce, a man whose obsession with surveillance will transform him into a vigilante. But what kind of vigilante, and more importantly, to inflict what kind of justice? Well, that's a question you will have to answer on your own. Let's take a look.
you understand. That you'll never be free again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, last year at E3, Watch Dogs was the surprise of the show. And earlier this year, we unveiled an open world Chicago with unprecedented interactions. Now, at this E3, we have plenty more surprises to reveal. So I expect to be seeing a lot more of Watch Dogs very soon. Very exciting and horrifying and awesome. I would actually go off the grid, except I don't want to give up my gamer score. So <laughs> I'll never abandon that number. Thank you so much, Dominic. It's that was so, pleasure. so cool. Thank pleasure. you. Give it up for Dominic. Gay. Thank you very much. I give Dominic my number, but clearly he already has it. All right. Now, that game is pretty hardcore. But fortunately, the next game is the complete opposite. It is singing and dancing in front of your television like a crazed lunatic, a happy, high-storing, crazed lunatic. This is Just Dance 2014. <laughs> this is where I'm Christina Aguilera. Oye, mami. Come on, guys. From the tallest building in Tokyo, long way from them hallways. It was O's and OYs, they counted always. Real fat, all day. Now, baby, we can party. Oh, baby, we can party. She read books, especially about red rooms and tie ups. I got a hook. Cause you see me in a suit with a red tie tied up. Big thing, it's nice to meet you. But Tam is money. Only difference is I own it. Now, let's stop Tam and enjoy this moment. Evolution of Party Gaming drops this October across all platforms. All right, now, did you guys know that the Just Dance franchise actually got its start as a mini game in one of Ubisoft's Raving Rabbids games? Well, now you do. And today, Ubisoft is once again using the Raving Rabbids as the base for changing the way that people think about entertainment. In 2011, Ubisoft created Ubisoft Motion Pictures, and you probably already know that these guys are working on very exciting movie projects around, around Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell. I got so excited I couldn't speak. What you may not know is that they're also preparing to unleash those insane little creatures into your television screens. Done in partnership with France Television and Nickelodeon here in the United States, Rabbids Invasion, the TV show, is about to launch very soon. And here's the deal, not only will you be able to watch the show on TV, but for the first time, you're going to be able to play it on your interactive screens. Yes, play your TV show. Here is a first taste of all the craziness you're going to get from those little rabbits. Take a look.
Adorable. Awesome and adorable. To talk about, uh, to talk about Rabbit's Invasion, the interactive TV show, please welcome Adrian Lacey, who's here to explain how the way that we entertain is about to completely change. Hi. Hi, Aisha. Hello, E3. How are you? Hi. Well, good to Another see you. I know. I'm, it's me. They're all normal size. <laughs> I am a mutant. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, TV and movies have long mastered the art of engaging the emotions of an audience through great storytelling. They make us laugh, cry, angry, afraid, even scream like little girls. <laughs> or big ones. <laughs> Think about how many times you and your kids have tried to tell a TV or a movie character to watch out, it's right behind you, run you fool, or even solve the whodunit from your favorite detective before he's actually done it. Mm -hmm. So what about actually being part of the story, maybe even getting off your butt and being part of the entertainment itself, both on and off screen? Well, this generation of consoles, tablets, and mobile devices are finally making that possible. Microsoft is at the forefront of this intersection, and we're proud to announce our close partnership in bringing this new experience to Xbox One. TV is about to invade your living room and bring it back to life like never before. Very, very cool. So tell me what kind of goofiness can we expect from the Rabbids TV show? So let's have a look at the first episode and some of the interactive missions that you'll be able to experience on your various devices. In this case, the using the motion control camera. So now you can dance with the rabbits and mimic them to help the story move forward. There are also puzzles to solve using your voice, and you can play a series of observation games like Spot the Chicken, which we'll see in a minute. So the fun comes from actively participating in your favorite scenes. Check out the chicken showdown as the kids rack up the points trying to massacre our little bunnies with rotten eggs by simply aiming with their finger. Now the observation game. The fastest draw wins. And finally, what could be better than screaming with your children instead of at them? Super fun, super fun, and another game in which my five-year-old nephew is totally going to crush me. So thanks for that, uh, Adrian Lacey. Everybody, give it Thank up for you Adrian. Much. Thank you, Aisha. Super cute. All right, it's about that time, guys. We've had our fun with dancing and rabbits, but now it's time to get back to the core gamer goodness, and that means that it's time for Assassin's Creed. Yes. Yes. Now, when you think about it, let's be honest, we've always wanted to be a pirate. All of us, the high seas, the adventure, the rampant spread of infectious diseases, and in Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag, you are a pirate. And to show us what that pirate is all about for the first time, here's a brand new trailer. Point your face at this.
Oh, holy crap. That was all of the fun, all of it. Here to tell us a little bit more, please welcome the creative director on Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Jean Guedon. How do I shut? Very everybody. cool, very, very cool. Uh, the Assassin's guys are actually pretty jumpy backstage. Either you guys have been hanging out with the energy drink girls or you are incredibly stoked about this year. We're very excited, Aisha. As you can see from that trailer, we promise to deliver a brutal pirate experience. Epic naval battles, intense combat on lands, and a lot of drunken chaos. <laughs> but being a pirate wasn't always about swashbuckling violence or caricatures you see in movies. I'm, I'm kind of bummed. I was really looking forward to doing a lot of swashbuckling. It it's a, fun. It's a wonderful word. However, it would probably be misapplied to the story of Edward Kenway. During the two years of development, we researched the era and understood why pirates makes everyone so exciting. And it's because they're the perfect symbol of freedom, rebellion, and adventure. Hmm. These men and women were ready to die young in order to live their own life. A short life, but a merry one, to quote the infamous Bart Roberts. Well, that does sound like something a pirate would say to somebody right before they ran them through as they were swashbuckling. And those sound like the perfect ingredients for a pirate game. Indeed. Actually, they're the perfect ingredients for an Assassin's Creed game. And we designed Black Flag to support these topics. They define every design decision we've made. The game will allow you to explore this pirate world the way you want, taking part or not in many different activities boarding ships, finding treasures, raiding smuggler caves, hunting, attacking forts, and so many more, on land and sea. Basically, from the Caribbean mangroves to the rooftops of Havana, from underwater shipwrecks to ancient Mayan temples, the game is an invitation. An invitation to fight, roam, and explore. An invitation to immerse yourself in one of the most ambitious open-world games ever created. During this E3, we will show you different demos illustrating this feeling of being a pirate, strong and free. But today, I want to open a window on this world for you with some direct in-game footage. Ooh. Thanks, and have a great E3. Yes. Closer to God and I watch As your hand turns full circle Wait to play that. The next title comes from a brand that was next generation before the next generation arrived. Take a look. 
The future has been foretold. Our world will be changed forever. And into this world, the next generation of heroes will rise and fall. As you can see, Trials is crazy fun, and in 2014, Ubisoft drops two new Trials games. Trials Fusion for Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 consoles, and the PC, and for the first time, one exclusively for mobile devices called Trials Frontier. Trials Fusion features a brand new trick system that lets you fly through the air on a bike, which looked killer, and is exactly as close as I ever need to come to being 50 feet above ground doing motocross, because I like to threaten my life virtually, not in real life. The two different versions will actually work together and complement one another, and this allows users to access previous runs, see high scores, and interact with the thriving online community anywhere through your smartphone. Finally, doubles and triples are within your grasp on your phone, and I can't wait. Eve, hi, uh, uh, welcome back. Um, it's, you know, I was actually just about to wrap things up, maybe, uh, get a bacon wrap hot dog, or we could get some poutine. Want to get some poutine with me? Yeah, I really came to say uh, thank you for the, for the fans who oh, are yeah. giving us uh, a great support, and the ones that are watching us today, but also some of them that are with us in the room today. We have some super fans here in the house. Say what's up. Yes. Awesome. I knew you were happier than the rest of the group. <laughs> but I have something more to show you today. Oh. You know, we want to take advantage of the next generation of consoles to enter a new genre. You know, the open world online RPG. So this game is brought to you by one of the best studios in the world, Massive Entertainment. I am super excited about it. You know, I think you will be too. It's so amazing. So let's watch it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> In 2001, a real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling the system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. 
A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. From this point, the breakdown will happen fast. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed. Transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, people will do anything for survival. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies, sleeper cells, covert agents, but nothing can be confirmed. Our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains? Hello everyone, I'm Niklas Siderström, Creative Director at Massive Entertainment. It's a scary question, isn't it? But we have the answer. Today, we're extremely proud and excited to share with you all a whole new entry of one of our most beloved franchises. It has been three weeks since the deadly pandemic hit New York City on Black Friday. So what will it take to save what remains? The Division, a classified unit of self-supported tactical agents, our last hope when all else fails. In the Dame Game, what you're about to see, my friends and I have been dispatched to the Brooklyn area. With one of us playing on his tablet in real time, we're heading towards the police station we heard was in bad shape. Okay. I've got my group heel loaded, so 
So if you guys want to check your skills and switch it up, you can. I'm gonna pull them out. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm good. Let's do it. Thank you. With Tom Clancy's The Division, you will discover a whole new online open world RPG experience coming out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Society is on the brink of collapse. So remember, it could happen at any time. It could happen to you. All right. 
That was, every time Ubisoft unveils new IP, I just lose my mind. That looks so, so beautiful. Take it easy, it's not real money, and I'm pretty sure it's not infected. Uh, that is it for us, guys. This has been an incredible afternoon. Every single killer game you saw here will be yours to explore at the UB booth on the floor here at E3. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're watching online, put on some pants and stay tuned for the post-show wrap-up with fan questions and live reactions from our experts. And to everyone lucky enough to be here at E3 in the flesh, you know what to do. Get down to the UB booth and do that shit. We'll see you there. for the incredible Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. We've got visual confirmation. Sam, talk to me. He's dead. Take them out before they trigger that bomb. Ready. Three, two, one. This is it, Briggs. I'll cover your exit. I call this my gauntlet of doom. It's awesome for keeping out any would-be thieves. This is Nigel. He's like a deadly weapon. And the bestest friend you could ever have, all in one. <laughs> Nagasaki! of civilian casualties. Supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. Moving. Oh shit, hold on, I think we got one more. Watch out, watch out, on the left, on the left. Yep.
internets and webs and other people. Uh, we're here for the post show, for the UB post show. We're going to be asking the dev teams more about the games. And, uh, and we've got questions from you on the internet. So are you ready? I'm ready. OK, here we go. We've got some questions first off for Splinter, Splinter Cell Blacklist team member Maxime Bellon. OK, the first person, Eric, says, Splinter Cell Blacklist has some great stuff going on, but how does it really play is the question. Oh, <laughs> I think what's interesting is that it plays the way you want, really. We've really tried to make the game so that you could play at your own pace. So if you're more a stealth player and you want to take your time, you want to think more before you act, you can totally do it. We've got like an economy system and a customization system that fully allows you to like be rewarded when you're playing and be able to customize your gear to support that play style. If you're more of an action player, you can also like go more action. And again, the, the economy system rewards you for that. And if you're kind of this middle character, the player that likes to be what I like to call the panther, right? The guy that likes a little bit of action, but he wants to do it super silently. Well, you can also play that way. Killer. Killer. Very cool. Okay. Uh, we're going to go on to a question about the crew with Julian Garrity. So uh, Jimmy wants to know, uh, so hang on, was that the whole of the U.S.? It was. It's one contiguous map. So you can drive from L.A. to New York if you want. And no loadings, no nothing. It's all streamed. Wow. So that's something we're pretty proud of, and it's pretty next gen. That's crazy impressive. Um, okay, uh, Jean Guedon, and everybody raise your hand because I've forgotten everything that's happened already. I blacked out. Okay, Jean, um, Cameron wants to know, I'm just going to snuggle in here between you guys. Uh, why did you guys end up selecting Pirates for uh, AC4? Does this mean it will be set more on ships than on land? Well, we, we actually selected Pirates because everybody loves Pirates and we were ready to deliver it properly. You know, we know how to make cities, natural environments, and with 83, the naval experience, it was time to really craft this unified big pirate game, merging actually ground and naval. And so, no, it won't uh, mostly be spent, you know, uh, at sea. It will be at the player's will, basically. So we have tons of locations on ground locations and the ocean will uh, serve as a, as a main hub. So it's, it will be up to the player to spend more time at sea if he wants to. But you can, you can be at sea and you can be fighting at sea. You don't have to get off of the ship to get some action. Definitely. It's totally systemic. So just to, to upgrade your ship, you can, uh, you can just raid some other ships. Any, every single ship on the ocean is a potential you know, target with the cargo it carries so that you need actually to upgrade your own ship and progress further in the game. But, uh, but it's up to you to do it or not. Killer. Okay, let's see. Uh, watchdogs. That's you. And tell me your name again because I forgot it. I've been drinking. Kevin Short. Kevin. Kevin Short. Okay. So a lot of fans were asking, uh, do you always do? You, hmm. I don't know what this. I don't. I don't quite understand this tweet. So let's see if you can. Uh, you can unpack it for me. Do you need to be always on to play Watch Dogs? Do you need to be always on? It doesn't really make sense, does it? Is that like probably a reference to online? Do you need to always be on online? Maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's probably what it is. And the short answer is no. You do not always need to be online. Uh, you can play offline if you decide. It's, it's entirely player choice. But the thing with, uh, with us is the credo for Watch Dogs is everything is connected and connection is power. So playing with your friends is what we encourage. We want people to be able to do that and try that out. And I think at E3 we're going to show some interesting stuff of uh, how that works. People are, people are going to get to play this on the floor? No, no we, uh, we won't be playing it on the floor, but uh, we'll be showing off some new stuff. I'm going to play it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nicholas. There you are. Hi, Nicholas. Hi. Okay. So uh, Declan asks, is this an MMORPG or is it something different? Well, I don't know. What, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, it looked <laughs> badass, but it was, I mean, it was looking yeah. like, like beautiful open world, you know, campaign driven play. So the thing is that I, I love RPG games for a long, long time and I played tons of um, MMOs as well, obviously. And uh, the thing is, there's a lot of uh, similarities to an MMO, but we call it an online open world game. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, we have all the social features. You can, you know, hook up with your friends or use our revolutionary matchmaking system to, you know, uh, find new friends that you can play the game with. And you can also play it solo if you want to, obviously. 
Uh, then we have the open world, huge part of New York where you can play around, immersive, and we have dynamic content, which means that every time you play the game, it's different what mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And so you never know what's going to be around next corner, a friend or a foe, or you know, uh, a new event you've never seen, or maybe even that thing you've been looking for all week. And then obviously we have all the RPG mechanics you can dream of, you know, with player progression, loot, skills, abilities, crafting, group content, and player versus player. And in addition to that, we are also, once we go live, we will have uh, continuous updates with new missions, skills, and even new areas where you can play. So, MMO or not, I let the audience decide. Well, answering your own questions, Internet, you'll never do that. Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's have another question about Splinter Cell. Uh, Maxime, um, how long will the single player campaign be? Uh, it's, um, it, it's, it's a pretty long game. I think what's interesting with what we're doing also is that we have a lot of co-op missions that are also, are also playable in single player. So it's, that's kind of interesting because you can be playing the campaign and then you can drop by and do a, a little co-op mission with a friend. Then maybe your friend goes to bed and you can play all by yourself another co-op mission, then you go back to. So we've got really a lot of content for players. And then on top of that, we've got Spy vs. Mercs. That's like all unified thanks to the, the supercomputer that Sam has, which we call the SMI, the Strategic Mission Interface. So we're really trying to blur the lines between all of our game modes to really give a, an experience that's not just you know a, an X amount of our single player story, but it's really a, a really big game. Yeah. Excellent. Um, let's see. I, I feel like there's a lot of guys up here who aren't identified on my iPad who just put down their Red Bulls to come stand on stage. So um, is there anybody here? Anybody else here on the Watch Dogs team? Just it's just anybody else. Who are you people down here? Who are you? Are you? Did you come up from the audience to stand on stage? And, Oh, okay, good. Oh, you're oh, you're our gameplay guys. You're our online guys. Okay, good. Um, honestly, and I'm gonna, I should have this stuff memorized, but uh, I don't, and I also don't think I have it in here. So I'm gonna have you guys identify yourselves. Okay, I'm out consumer. I'm from Spain. My name is Rock, and I'm a YouTuber. Okay. Well, I'm a YouTuber too. I'm David from Does David Games from the Netherlands. Okay. I'm Dan Bull. I'm a YouTuber and musician from the UK. Excellent. I'm Matthew Matt Shacha. I'm a YouTuber and the uh, official ghost. Uh, I'm Stephen from Liverpool, and I'm an E3 competition winner. Your accent's adorable. Thank All right. <laughs> so, um, I, you know what I want to do is just actually ask you guys what you thought about the presentation today and what maybe stood out the most for you, and we'll start with adorable uh, accent guy. <laughs> um, for me, I'm like a really big Assassin's Creed fan, so Assassin's Creed 4 trailer was just epic, like, and then the division. Hold this right inside your mouth. Yeah, 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 the division at the very end, yeah, that, that, that bananas, was right? just, like, really yeah. good. Oh, and the crew as well, the crew racing game. Right. Yeah, epic. Really, yeah, really cool. good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about you? I'm excited for everything that we knew was coming, yeah. and then the things that we didn't know were coming just totally smashed it. So, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, we're excited for Assassin's Creed, we're excited for Watch Dogs. Holy crap, what's the direction? You know, yeah. all this other stuff. Like, the crew, I don't know. I'm, now I don't know what I'm excited about anymore. It's kind of <laughs> everything. Do you play a lot of driving games? Uh, not really. I'm more a Clancy guy. So the end of the show, I was kind of like in my seat, like, mm, and then the end of the show, and I was like, oh, what is this? This is. I feel like these guys every year just piss themselves thinking about how are we going to top last year's IP reveal because th that reveal was a secret. I didn't even know. I hadn't seen it. It had, a, it had a code name and everything until I when I walked out on stage today, which is why I was like lying across the stage trying to see the screen. It was bananas, right? It was crazy. It was crazy. I, I'm completely and totally I, the cover system. Everything about the game just looks amazing. I just I can't wait. And you know, like I said. You know, everything, everything looked great. Oh, good. Know. Okay, how about you? Yeah, for me, it was Rocksmith because, I mean, I'm a guitarist, but I haven't really got better at playing the guitar for about 10 years. So I reckon if I play this, it's going to give me the incentive to really get, like, as good as, uh, I don't know, Slash or someone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why not Slash? Yeah. I mean, the coolest thing about that was, I think, with a lot of uh, a lot of music gaming, it's not really about musicianship. It's just about gameplay. That looks like that's really a game that's directed towards making you a better guitarist. This is one of the first ones I've seen that that really is going to give you skills that you can go away from the game, pick up a real guitar, right. get on stage, and you'll be able to perform the same thing. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. giving you real-world skills. And then having Jerry Cantrell here was killer. Are you guys Alison Chates fans? Oh, no, not me. Oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. Who over here? No. <laughs> Who, did anybody get excited when he walked out? Did anybody ask him? Was it just I me? knew him, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. So should that just continue, or yeah. more questions for him? I'm, I'm awesome. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Where to start? Um, I was actually here just for Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs, mm -hmm. mainly because I didn't know about the other stuff. Yeah. Now the crew looks cool. I just actually want to play it before I have a like, final judgment. But the other thing, what was it called? Like The Division? Oh, jeez. Yes. 
I, I think I was the loudest person. He actually started filming me instead of the stream <laughs> when it's like, wait, wow. And yeah, so that's incredible. And I'm like an old school Rayman fan, so I'm oh, kind of excited about that too. So cute. Yeah. Uh, well, I only play RPG shooter games, and so The Division was the thing that I, I mean, I'm always super excited about Watch Dogs. Last year, I, I almost cried, but looking at that really? gameplay, I always love it when there's real gameplay in the demo, and you can see what it's going to feel like to play the game, and it looked insane! It looked That's insane! Exactly I was losing my mind! Happened. I was I actually thought I was looking at a trailer, like when the, yeah. the camera panned down and, and, and through the streets of New York, and then... Right. Beautiful! Started. Wait, what? What happened? Yeah. So yeah, that game, awesome, and of course, Assassin's Creed and uh, Watch Dogs already. Awesome. All looks good. AC game. looks good. Yeah, new, right? and kind of va varied styles of gameplay. I think you play all those games and get something different out of them. Definitely. I was saying that's great, that's good, that's great, that's good, and I said that's unreal. Yeah. That cannot be true. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that that's how we yeah. felt, yeah. and yeah, before after that or before that, um, who who doesn't want to be a pirate? So I really, I have a, I have a punchline. yeah, I ever wanted to be a pirate. So, so yeah, Assassin's Creed uh, looks really and great. Also, I feel like that is that AC three footage was beautiful. Like, you know, I mean, the, some pirates had like scurvy and no teeth. I mean, that was like the sexiest group of pirates and the sexiest pirate action I'd ever seen. To, do, to say that, but yeah, yeah, yeah you I did four out of five. <laughs> yes, I would have dated five out of five if I was drunk enough. Um, okay, here let me let me let me bring a couple uh, uh, a few more questions about uh, gameplay. And uh, let's see. Oh, um, well, since everybody was freaking the F out about uh, the division, Nicholas, um, let me ask you one more question. Um, yeah, this question is not a real question, so let me ask you a real question. Is this a fully integrated next gen experience? Will it use second screen? Oh, yes. We have, uh, we have we are extremely proud of our companion gaming. And it was something, as soon as we decided that we were going to go for the next generation of consoles, we decided we need to do something that's fully interactable uh, so you can play with your friends while they're playing the HD game. So what we have done is that the, when, once you, uh, your friends are playing the game, you can just log in with a separate account, separate everything on the pad or your phone, and you see the game from the burst view perspective. And from there, you can you know, target, uh, target enemies, debuff them, and even shoot them, and also target your friends and uh, buff them and heal them and support them and you know, give them tactical advice on you know, enemies coming around the corner and all those kind of things. So it's completely integrated and it's real time and you can play for hours with your friends. I think the greatest thing about online play is, is how rich the cooperative experience can be when it's off campaign and you can really be integrating with your friends in a real, real time way that's not just kind of limited by you know, the narrow confines of, a, of like a, a local, yeah. you know, local campaign play. So. You can play on the bus or at work. Yes, all of those things, or just not go to work. How about that? Um, all right, I want to get one more question in about each game, and then I'm going to get everybody's takeaway. Oh, do we need to wrap it up? Oh, Shiza, internet, apparently you're out of time. I know that's not true because the internet is never out of time. But um, can we just can I just have everybody just say what their favorite moment of the presentation was? You can you can say your own game if you like, but I'll just start here. For me, yeah. the division. Nice. Uh, amazing. Yeah. I was blown away. It was incredible, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys all like in cones of silence over there? Do you never see each other's like game dev? Oh, when we have secrets, yeah. we keep the secrets. Ooh. So nobody here saw the crew. Uh, trailer or gameplay footage. Oh, fun. I hadn't seen the Splint Cell experience and the division. Complete surprise. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. Okay, because I just love that you guys are excited about the other team's stuff. That's that's rad. I think we're all going to see the division. <laughs> I think we we all got caught by surprise, right? And it looks it looks great. It's uh, I think I'm, I'm surprised it's a Clancy game also. So me on Splinter Cell, you know, it, it touches me a little bit. I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. You know, I'm thinking about the future of of Tom Clancy, and I'm like, oh, okay, you yeah. know, maybe the future is here. And it does feel very futuristic, very modern. I'm not going to say The Division, since that would be very self-serving. So I'm going to say all the other games, and I, I think it, uh, yeah, and I think that, you know, uh, we, we got a lot of buzz now, and that's super exciting, but the thing is that uh, all the games that were shown was just amazing, and yeah. I think it's going to be a good year for Ubisoft. Absolutely. I fully agree, but I think I, I really have a kick uh, for the crew. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's, you know, triggers things. <laughs> It triggered this uh, this string, you know, a little glit in me. Uh, yeah, it looks amazing. Excellent, excellent. Mine uh, have to be assassins. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the black flag looks great. I'm pretty excited about that. I also probably have to say uh, just dance because my six-year-old daughter goes nuts for that. So she's going to be pretty excited. That's with that. pretty much a game that everybody. They won't admit it, but if you get a beer and I'm like, you know, your dad will go nuts on just dance. Totally. That's exactly right. Excellent. 
Don't give your daughter a beer, though. Um. <laughs> for, for me, it's the division, that moment when, when the guy just slips over the car. It felt so natural. It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm totally evocative. Two things, actually. Um, I'm a Trials fan, so that was, like, awesome. Finally, on, on, on a mobile device and Assassin's Creed. Simple as that. You can move on now. Assassin's okay. Creed is the bomb. You know how you feel. You're a, yes, yes, it's nice. It's nice that you know yourself. Mine was a mix-up between... I can't decide between the crew or the division. I like the idea of you can just drive around anywhere in America. Mm -hmm. You can bring your friends with you. But then the division, I think that was a defining moment for me because I thought it was a, I thought it was like a CG as it panned down from the roof, just mm -hmm. like these guys said. Yeah. And then I realized it was live gameplay. And yes. I was like, oh, I want to play this. It's like, holy crap, right? I said, that's my takeaway. Holy crap. Division, easily. Just, uh, I, I, you know, I loved everything I saw today, but I, I, I'm sorry, Division just killed it. They just knocked it out of the park, man. It's a home run, man. I can't Same believe way. it. <laughs> uh, for me, it was Assassin's Creed, definitely, yeah. And the crew, I'm not, like, a big racing game fan, but that would definitely make me play a racing game. Awesome. Definitely. Cheers. Awesome. Uh, all right, well, uh, I'm signing off. Uh, internets and um, feel free to tweet anything you want to say about today's show, uh, even if it's even if it's laggy because I can take it. Uh, this was an amazing afternoon. Um, the hashtag is UBE3. There are other hashtags you can use. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Get down to E3 if you're here in town and play these games. They're killer. See you next year.